Okay, so this is going to be a series on my experiences with Frog Lube, starting with a brand new PX4 Storm full size. The goal of this series will be to completely examine Frog Lube, its applications, and especially any of the downsides I find, and to do so in a manner that documents the entire process, documents the maintenance practices, and especially if possible, documents how and why any failures occur. I've been unsatisfied, dissatisfied with the overall available documentation and reporting on any problems encountered with frog lube, especially things like gumming up or becoming un... Um, basically the gun jamming up or tying up for some reason or another. And I've also found that the videos which do seem to document the process are the videos where people aren't having a problem with frog lube. So I'm going to pay particular attention to the issues reported that seem to be substantiated in one form or another. So most of the problems reported with frog lube appear to relate to not using frog lube according to the directions and as a lubricant normally should be used, which means wiping off the excess and keeping the gun without just random lubricants sitting around in the gun. Additionally, Frog Lube's instructions explicitly indicate that you should follow the lubricating instructions in your firearm manual. And Beretta's manual for the PX4 contains a fairly, uh, fairly complete set of lubricating directions, and they've included as well online an official video giving lubrication suggestions for this line. So I'm going to follow that as well and document that. Now, some of the videos I've seen on Frog Lube have you disassemble completely the firearm before you work for the treatment process. Now, if I have to completely disassemble this firearm in order to maintain it, or even to do the pre-treatment, I'm not comfortable using frog lube. So the test is going to be, can I use frog lube without going beyond a field strip and still effectively work with the firearm and not encounter any of the issues related to frog lube that I've read about. Now, the particular issue that I'm really concerned about is what's called the migration issue. And some people with frog lube have reported that while they are able to generally wipe off the excess and follow the instructions with frog lube, as the gun is fired, part of frog lube's behavior is to reliquify and lubricate the firearm. However, in its liquefied state, some people are reporting that that causes parts of frog lube or that liquid to seep and migrate into some of the areas of the firearm that are inaccessible and thus are unable to be properly cleaned after firing or during storage, which leads to a gumming up of the weapon. Now there have been videos of frog lube used in cold weather successfully but there have also been reports that the cold weather causes frog lube to jam up. Now, the only really substantiated issue I've been able to think about with frog lube is the migration issue. It seems that if there were ever a legitimate reason for frog lube to seize up, it would be the migration of frog lube into areas that are inaccessible from a field strip that cannot be cleaned properly, or that the excess cannot be wiped off, which would lead to frog lube in a state that it wasn't designed to be in and therefore 
leading to these jammings through seizing up or getting sticky or gummy or something like this. So I'm going to be working with that. Now my frog loop is on its way. I've ordered only the paste and the solvent because I shouldn't have to use two different forms of the lubricant in order to get what I want. And frog lube bills the paste as a CLP. So combined with the solvent, I shouldn't have to use more than the paste in order to get good lubrication for the firearm. So let's take a look at that. Now, before I even begin to lube this gun up, which is not going to be in this video, I want to do a complete analysis of what the Beretta manuals suggest for lubricating the firearm, an analysis of the potential areas where we might see migration issues, and I want to talk about what I plan to do and what I plan to do to avoid migration issues and fully and properly use frog lube correctly. So the first thing that frog lube recommends is to completely clean the weapon and that doesn't seem like it's going to be much of an issue for me. However, their solvent is water-based. So if we take a look at this system here, we're going to really talk about a few different parts. And when it comes to working with this, we're all, I'm always going to be referring to these parts as they are used or referred to in the maintenance section of the PX4 manual, which means that we have a frame, a central cam block, the barrel, the spring and guide rod assembly, and finally the slide. So now, if we look at the barrel, there are no nooks or crannies on the barrel that could possibly cause us problems. It would be easy to completely clean this and it would be easy to lubricate it. And Beretta's general advice when it comes to the barrel is to clean it with a lightly oiled cloth to dry out the barrel and then to oil the locking lugs and the cam block path as well as to oil the barrel itself. It also suggests to put a light coat of oil into the barrel and to wipe out the barrel. So this should be pretty straightforward to take care of and there shouldn't be much issue here. For the guide rod assembly they recommend that you should lightly oil it. They say that it might be necessary to clean it after significant amounts of firing. So similarly, there are nooks and crannies in this. However, I think that I will be able to apply an extremely light coat of frog lube and similarly buff out or clean out any excess using either a nylon brush or proper use of a cloth. So I also do not expect any issues with the guide rod assembly. Analyzing the central block assembly, Beretta again suggests cleaning with an oiled cloth and to pay particular attention to the spring uh, guide rod hole and then to lightly oil the cam groove, and the locking areas. So I do have only minor concerns here because I need to have a proper tool to be able to apply lubrication into this tunnel here, this hole. But this hole is straightforward and it doesn't have any hidden areas. So it will be easy to do that with the appropriate tool. Now, those three are the fairly easy pieces, the central block, the barrel, and the guide rod assembly. The places where it gets harder are on the slide 
and the frame. Now the slide, Beretta's suggestion is to take a soaked oil cloth, and they don't say lightly soaked, they say a cloth soaked in oil. In other parts, they say, when referring to other um, parts, they suggest a lightly oiled cloth. With regards to the slide, their manual suggests a cloth soaked in oil. And they suggest cleaning it completely. And they put particular attention on the breech face, the extractor, on the slide rails here. They also mention the locking shoulder and the crevices for the locking system, the rotating barrel. Now, additionally, we note that there is, I'm going to call it something along the lines of an enclosed firing pin safety mechanism. But unfortunately, it's not fully sealed. So if we look at this, we'll notice that the breech face that they suggest cleaning also gives us direct access into the firing pin channel. And this is an area where I'm very concerned about because we have instructions from Beretta to clean this area well. And we also have instructions to, well, I mean, in general, we want to avoid getting lubrication into that firing channel especially frog lube due to its properties. So this is going to require some care on how to handle it. Now I think that by simply applying sparingly the use of frog lube here and cleaning it properly with the solvent, we'll be able to handle this area. Beretta suggests that while oiling, we oil the slide pretty much. They just say lightly oil the slide in their assistance videos, they talk about oiling the slide rails, and I would generally also oil the shoulders where I see wear points. And finally, in my analysis, I've noticed some other wear points which are worth considering. So this all relates to this slide, um, to this firing mechanism back here. You'll notice that even before I fired the gun, there are these wear points here where this top element contacts the hammer in the system. Additionally, a very interesting aspect of the system is that there's this little hole right here. And that lighter piece of metal in there is basically the firing pin, or as much as I can tell. And this piece here, let me see if I can get it here. That little piece there is the firing pin block, which gets pressed up to allow the firing pin to fully um, slam onto the primer. Now this whole part is exposed. And if frog lube were to get into this firing pin channel, I suspect that we might have issues. On the other hand, this piece up here is someplace we definitely want to put frog lube because this is a wear point for the slide. Now, I'm not sure that I would, and well, I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with this, but I suspect it's going to require very careful application of frog lube up here and very meticulous cleaning of this firing channel area here to ensure that no frog lube gets in to that firing pin channel, which might gum it up. And it's the same with this, because this piece here also shows that it's a bit of a wear point. So it's going to need lube here, but we're gonna to have to make sure that we're very careful to avoid getting it into the crevices, because this piece here moves up and down. Let's see. And so if that piece gets frog lube into it, we're not going to be able to get it out without disassembling it. So I'm very concerned about how we might handle that. 
Moving back along this slide, we have the safety and decocking mechanism. And here, we are going to want to do some kind of lubrication here. However, I think we're going to be able to work that pretty well because this is pretty easy to access. We have on the right side here this little channel which handles the deactivation. You'll see that little lever that pops out there that handles the deactivation of the trigger mechanism, which we'll see again on the frame of the pistol. Now, this doesn't necessarily require lubrication, but it's definitely a point where frog lube could get in there and cause problems. So again, this is a place where we have to be careful if we're going to apply this, or at least I plan to be careful in it because it looks like a danger point. And then finally, we have yet another wear point here, which is the point that contacts the decocking lever on the frame. You'll notice that when we deactivate or activate the decocker, that piece moves up and down. The opposite piece here does not appear to be a wear point at all. I can't see any wear happening on that piece, and similarly, it is recessed and doesn't seem to contact any of the pieces on the frame. However, it also is a little recessed, so I suspect that we could end up with trouble there again with the frog glue. So my intention, my plan for handling these points is basically to not slather on frog glue the way I've seen it in some other videos, but to apply it to the entire slide very carefully, and then to make sure that these pieces here are fully cleaned and completely void of any excess frog lube in the system. Likewise, back here, we have the other exposed area, which is the, I guess the rear end of the firing pin that rotates out of the way when doing the decocking. And it seems to me that this part might benefit from some lubrication, but I don't think it's worth the risk. There's just no way to properly clean this out if frog lube gets inside of it. And I suspect that it will work much better if we leave it basically clean and dry, especially for cold weather. So given the contained nature of this system here, I'm going, my plan is to focus on the exposed clear war points and completely avoid melting frog lube into the rest of the system. That should allow for cleaning of the points mentioned particularly by Beretta, including the breech face, and should ease that cleaning process if frog lube works the way it's supposed to while still avoiding getting frog lube into the channel, especially through these three points of entry here, here, and here. The points here and here are of worry, not because of the firing channel, though those might also lead into the firing channel, but because they might gum up the decocking action on the pistol, which I would like to avoid if I can. So that's the slide and how we might approach dealing with the slide. At least that's my analysis of the slide and the potential issues with frog lube when lubricating the slide. Now with the frame in the manual, according to my memory, as best I can recall, the manual suggests first starting with a dry unoiled cloth and wiping the surface of the frame. It then suggests to take a lightly oiled cloth and clean the, um, cent the central cam block seat here, as well as the extractor and the hammer surfaces. So it gives three main points to focus as points to clean 
and then or as well as the slide rails along here and here. Now these slide rails after cleaning are supposed to be lubricated according to the manual. However, the manual is also extremely um, explicit about very carefully, and they use the word carefully, drying off this frame after it has been cleaned with a lightly oiled cloth. That tells me that they do not expect lubrication to be explicitly applied in the cam block seat or on the hammer or any of these other pieces. We have here a few pieces that are contact points in this frame. One is this hammer, which you can see has some points here and has a point here which contacts with that upper part of the frame that we were talking about earlier. The extractor is going to be in contact with brass, but otherwise not really much else. And then we have these two levers on the end. This lever back here, right here, this is the decocking lever, which if pressed down, will decock the hammer. And then we have this, which is designed to lift up on the firing pin block and enable you to fire. So these are also contact points, and so to some extent I would like to put some sort of protection on them. However, I do not intend to apply significant amounts of lubrication here because the manual does not suggest it, and it merely suggests that this hammer and extractor should be cleaned, and then this whole system should be kept very dry. So I'm going to take the frog lube solvent and clean this entire area, make sure it's been dried off, make sure that I have a way of cleaning it, and then very judiciously and very carefully apply frog lube to a few specific points that I'd like to have a little extra lubrication on. But I'm not going to explicitly lubricate these areas during the normal course of fire. A, because it doesn't seem like these are points that are going to be big issues, and B, because I don't want excess frog lube heading into this area here, which is extremely difficult to get to. I would rather clean out the firing pin than have to take this apart and work on trying to get this clean. Now, fortunately, this is also a fairly open system. So if gunk does get in there, it should be fairly straightforward to use the frog lube solvent to completely clean it out and make sure that it stays clean. That is not necessarily true with the firing pin channel, which seems to be slightly tighter sealed, which means that if something does manage to get into the firing pin um, mechanism, it will likely be more difficult to clean it out than it will be to clean this out if it does get jumped in. I've also noticed that the tolerances on these levers is pretty loose, and the forces on these are pretty simple, so it shouldn't be very worrisome if this whole system is running dry. And in fact, in cold weather, it's likely to work better. So I'm not worried about lubrication of things in this area. Neither does Beretta seem to be worried about it. Merely keeping the extractor and the hammer clean of various dirts and other sorts of fouling. And then, and, and carbon. But the slide rails do need to have some lubrication on them. So there I plan to follow standard frog lube application. And I considered lubricating this um, central cam seat, but given the way the, uh, the pistol works, I don't think it'll be necessary. And I am probably going to stick with just giving it a good cleaning and then leaving it as is according to the Beretta instruction manual. Now in the front here I notice that there are some, also, some metal surfaces, most of it is polymer, but there's this area here which sort of creates this cavity and that's another place where I probably don't want frog lube to go, but it's also a non-critical place. If I do get frog lube in there and it sticks and comes up, 
it's not going to affect the rest of the operation of the firearm. So I'm okay. It's a, it's a sort of a watch for it area, but not critical. And it's not going to be lubed up anyways. Fortunately, down here in the cam seat, there is another spring object, which is the trigger spring, as far as I can tell by looking at it. And this could be an area that could get gummed up. But as I said before, I'm not planning to lubricate this area. So this should be also fine. And I don't know if it's possible for you to see this, but you can see that the mechanism is also very open. So again, this is another easy to clean area. Solvents, the frog loop solvent should easily be able to clean this out should any gunk ever get into there. So overall, the frame itself has a lot of nooks and crannies that we could get frog loop into and mess things up. However, those nooks and crannies are not supposed to be lubricated according to Beretta, and instead, they're just supposed to be cleaned and only the slide rails are going to be lubricated. So the frame does have some areas to clean, but overall it requires almost no lubrication here. So we should be pretty good. And that gives us our main components for taking care of the lubrication on this pistol. Basically, we're going to follow <coughs> the Beretta manual to a T according to the instructions using the frog lube and I'm going to make sure that all of the petroleum products that I initially applied on this are completely cleaned off and then I'm going to be extremely careful when working around the rear slide area where the firing pin mechanism is because I do need to take care of lubricating here, but I need to make sure that nothing gets into the firing pin channel. This, I think, is our most dangerous area. Everywhere else, such as the trigger and hammer assembly, don't require a lot of lubrication. And the other areas, such as in the central cam block and the barrel, are very open and very easy to maintain. So those won't be difficult. It's easy to wipe off the excess there. It's in this area here that we need to be careful. And I plan to go into more detail when I get the frog lube, demonstrating exactly what I'm doing to ensure that I don't get gunk that I can't wipe off back here. Now, if my plan actually works, that means that we will have frog lube on the system. It will be wiped off. We won't have anything to get sticky or tacky. So the cold weather behavior and the storage behavior of this gun when set out for a few days should exhibit none of the problems that have been reported from other people. And then the trick will then be to shoot the gun and see if we get migration problems. So I will shoot the gun and then examine these areas and see whether or not I can detect any migration into especially the firing pin channel. Now my suspicion is that because the gun is going to be fired this way or sideways maybe or something like this and because of the very small amount of lubrication that is going to be on here that the gun will fire cycle and a small amount of lubrication will show up here, but that it will be of such a small degree and such a small note that it will pretty much stay where it was placed initially. And we might get a little bit on the hammer, but again, it will stay where it was supposed to or just get thrown out around here and will not migrate into the other areas. That is my suspicion or my expectation given the uh, approach that I'm going to take for this. Now, I could be completely wrong about that, but we will find out. So that's my analysis of the PX4 from a frog lube point of view and planning out how I might approach lubricating this firearm. When I get the frog lube in, I'm going to treat these parts and apply the frog lube and see what actually happens and see if I'm able to follow through on this plan and whether it works and avoids 
getting pieces into their frog lube into the rest of the channels.